What's up everyone and welcome to your Friday's edition of Reptile News. Now it's going to be a little short one today and I've noticed that the last couple have been a little bit longer than usual, slightly, and that's kind of what I'm going to try to aim for in the future because it seems like you guys like the little bit longer ones, um, but only if there's something to talk about and we don't have a ton to talk about today so it's probably going to be a short one. And we're going to start today in Michigan where another non-native animal has been found. This one it appears to me to be a, a tagu. The lizard was found in Dearborn Heights and thus far the owner has not been found. The Michigan Humane Society posted it on their Facebook page and they're saying they're not even 100% sure what the species is yet. I'm going for Tagu though. Which leads me into my comment to you. What do you think it is? Leave a comment down below and we'll see who's right eventually. And now we're going to move over across the pond where it, it, I just love stories like this. The Merwell Zoo is releasing a, a whole 84, I think it was, 80 some sand lizards which are pretty much absent from their area now i guess they're common over asia and stuff but they disappeared in england and quite some time ago so they're releasing 80 some out of these lizards and 25 of them are going to have these itty bitty little radio transmitters on them now they say these sand lizards because of the way they live they're, they're very elusive and they're extremely difficult to see living in the heavy underbrush so these trackers are going to help them understand how they deal with their environment and where they travel to and just kind of what they do um the trackers i read are supposed to drop off um, within a short period of time or when the lizard sheds its skin so that's some amazing stuff um, I love hearing about these things I love hearing about reintroduction head start programs and, and just all that sciencey fun stuff and now we're gonna move on to Fort Frederick State Park where I I don't I mean that this story is not centered around the state park more so some of the dumb stuff that I see used in in uh, pest control, I guess you could say. Um, apparently somebody had found a local native non-venomous snake stuck in one of those pesky little glue traps and they did bring it to a park ranger who got the snake out of the trap and released it, which is amazing. That's why he is our BAMF of the day. But I can't stress enough how stupid these traps are, and especially these glue traps, there's so many unintended victims of them. I, I don't even know why they can be used, or if they can be used. Can they be used? I, I, I don't know why. I mean, obviously, this one was put there. Um, I'm assuming the state park put it there since it was found in a state park, which they should know better. But uh, I believe this one was put there for rodents. Um, but obviously, it didn't catch a rodent, it caught what is supposed to be catching the rodent. So maybe we can work on some more conservation for snakes that will in turn catch and eat our rodents so we won't have rodent problems and have to put sticky traps down. So if you use these sticky traps, please collect them all, dispose of them properly, and stop using them. And that, my friends, is going to be all your news for this Friday. If you'd like to read any more about these stories, those links are right down below here in the description. And as always, if you're still watching, my name is Jason White. Now you know what's going on in the reptile world. Be good to each other, and we'll see you Monday.